Good morning and welcome to this worship service for Sunday, March 17th, the fifth Sunday in Lent. I'm the Reverend Lisa Bourne. I am the outgoing interim rector here at Holy Comforter in Lutherville, and it is my privilege to offer this pre-recorded worship service on behalf of the new rector here at Holy Comforter, the Reverend Ann Nicholson. So let us have a brief moment of silence and prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Some foreigners, outsiders, show up for the festival, which is the Passover, and they say, we wish to see Jesus. Now, Philip runs to Andrew and presumably says something along the lines of, hey, there are all these foreigners who want to see Jesus. What should we do? Now, Andrew obviously has no answers. Who wants foreigners around at a time like this? Time is ticking and we have to prepare for the Passover. Who wants unexpected guests right now? So they find Jesus and they tell him all these folks are at the gates and they are looking for him. Jesus says, you know, really, if if they want to see me, like really see me, <laughs> stick around. You know, you'll have to deal with my death at the hands of Rome to really see me. So are they ready for that? Are you ready for that? Are we ready for that? Then there's a noise. Some thought it was thunder. Some thought, you know, looked like Jesus was talking to someone. But there was no one there. So it must be angels, right? But it was that voice from heaven. That same voice Jesus heard at his baptism that said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. That same voice from the cloud on the mountaintop with Peter, James, John, and Jesus that said, This is my beloved. Listen to him. Now when Jesus says, Father, glorify their name, the voice returns and says, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. So while everyone else is trying to figure out what is happening, Jesus shares what is happening. This voice has come for your sake, not mine. This voice that keeps coming around is for us, not for Jesus. And that makes perfect sense. Jesus knows this voice. This voice knows him. He has always heard this voice. And he comes to get us to listen to this voice. So why don't we hear this? Why don't we hear this voice like Jesus does? This question is quite natural. Why not us? could be a variety of reasons. Perhaps we're too busy and distracted to be listening or to be still and quiet. 
or we think we're too sophisticated to hear a voice or, you know, you, you really have to be crazy or mentally ill to hear voices. That's, that's not a good look. And it might be that we don't want to hear anything about having to watch Jesus die, having to watch Jesus be executed by the Roman Empire. All we know is that Jesus says, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. This voice that says, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. I have glorified my name, and I will glorify it again. We are left feeling that for God's name to be glorified, we need to be listening to God's voice and learn how to enter into this glorifying process with God. Holy Week, and all it pretends is looming in the background and it may be dark and it may be scary but it is not nearly as frightening as the reality that for others to see Jesus we might also need to be a part of this glorifying process we may not know what that means for us and we might need to be the voice for Jesus for the sake of others who want to see Jesus sharing what Jesus has taught us, what Jesus means to us. Sometimes language for this kind of sharing of the good news can be quite scary. I often worry, will I say the right thing? Will I accidentally say something that isn't correct? Will I offend someone? And the truth is that I have found sharing from my heart, sharing my experience of God with love and honesty, is the best way to voice my relationship with God and with Jesus. And that's the only thing that any of us can ever hope for, is to purely share from the heart. And so as we prepare this week for Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, we must also take time to listen to Jesus and follow him. Because there's Monday, Thursday, there's Good Friday, These are all times that we need to come and be with him and truly see him. Praying and reflecting on Holy Week is also an opportunity for us to listen for this voice, to listen for God's voice. This voice that is for our sake. This voice that speaks to us so that we might know how beloved we are as well, so that we might know how well pleased God is with us and be brave enough to share what we have received. Once we hear this voice and believe it, we will live into it so that others will see Jesus in all that we say and all that we do. Amen. Stricken, smitten, and afflicted, see him dying on the tree. Tis the Christ by man rejected, yes, my soul, tis he, tis he.
Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially our next rector. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God give you grace to never sell yourselves short. Grace to risk something big for something good. And grace to remember that this world is too dangerous for anything but truth, 
and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.